Hey guys, um, this is Rob from Roomworks. Um, today I'm going to do a bit of a different video. I'm going to just go over um, and explain some of the things I've done with the new newest release of my Foundry module. Um, here you can see a little workshop I've put together of the different prefab actors I've put together. Um, these can all be found in the Ruinworks, Ruinworks Actors Compendium. Um, any of these can be dragged out from the compendium onto any scene. Um, in which you'd like to show them. So I'll demonstrate that later as well, but I just wanted to run through them quickly because there are a couple of nuances which not everybody will necessarily notice right away. Um, and I'll try to point them out, highlight them as I go through. So to start with along the top here, um, we have three new stall stalls um, that I've put together for the Verbane's Tower um, in town scene. And I'll review that scene separately in a minute. Um, so the three stalls are a farmer stall, represented by this little farmer's icon. This is what I call the control token. Um, usually it's a white figure or a white um, image. And then that's just the token. You can drag that around and move the entire prefab whenever you do that, just like so. Um, and I usually try to choose an image that represents what the prefab token or the prefab actor is. In this case, I've chosen a farmer because this is meant to be a farmer stall where he's selling some of his vegetables and goods from the farm. Um, this is the most simple of them. There's no walls or lights attached to this specific prefab. Um, it's just kind of an image that you can throw onto any scene. So that's the first one I've done. The second one here is a food vendor. Um, this includes lights, an overhead tile, um, and again, can just be moved around as you please. Um, if I drag, I might already have a token on the scene. Here he is. If you look at it with a token, you can see that there is a roof, in fact. Um, and then as you get closer, you can look underneath to see the insides of the building. Um, the last stall that I have here is what I call the Tinker Stall. Um, it's like a little wooden wagon somebody might walk around with, and inside are some goods that this Tinker would sell to people. Um, now, the Tinker Stall is a little special in the fact that it has this other little white icon, which should also be hidden. I'll just check. You can see he's hidden, so players won't see him when he's dragged onto the scene, but the GM will see it, so it will be clickable for the GM still. Um, when this is clicked, it will transform uh, this little Tinker Stall to be closed. So right now you can see it's open, so when you click on the button when you're on the Actors tab, You can see now that the door is closed um, and it is not as light inside of the of the tinker stall. Now you might be wondering why did that why did that flash and disappear as opposed to just switch over? And that is a conflict between the levels module um, and monk's active tile trigger module. I'm hoping that's going to get fixed with version 10. I did bring I have put in a request in Monk Active Tiles Triggers GitHub to um, see if they can get it to work properly with levels. Um, and I did talk to Ripper as well about levels um, showing this change properly. Um, and I think it might get um, fixed with the version 10 release. Um, but right now we just kind of have to live with it. I find that if I change, if I click it and it's disappeared, if I just click on another tool, it shows up. Or if I change the level on the levels UI, it also shows up as well. Um, so. For the Tinker Stall, there's this little transform button. Um, and I've, you can see on some of these other prefabs that I've made, they also have transform buttons. So that's what these little icons are around the actors. They're little transform buttons to change the prefab, how it looks or how it acts. Now, I'm just going to drag them over here so you can see what it looks like when it changes. You might say here there's a what I call the bail wagon. Um, currently, it's knocked over because I've hit this little over arrow. That knocked the wagon over. If I hit the reset button, it is now upright again. So I can hit, knock it over. It's knocked over. Um, I can do the same thing for the barrel wagon. I can knock it over. Um, and the reason I made these is I just thought it'd be cool if you know uh, somebody cast a big spell like a gust of wind or a fireball, you can now knock a wagon over in the scene itself. 
Um, and also it's all useful if you ever have like, you want to set up a scene where there might be a knocked over wagon from a raid or something else that has happened that's, and the, the characters stumble upon it. Um, and then just hitting the reset button puts it back to the upright state. And that works for both of them, as you can see right there. Um, I will note, there are extra walls attached to these prefabs, and these change dynamically whenever you push these buttons. So these blue ones, the ones that are blue here, will show up when it's knocked over because it's upright. The wagon actually has a narrower profile. Um, so you might look at these and wonder why are there all these extra walls. They are there for a reason, and please don't delete them if you want the full effect when you transform um, these prefabs. Um, there's two more wagons that I've made, the first being the transport wagon. Um, to reset it, you hit the reset button again. So now it shows up with the horses hitting the over, um, the knock over button. It doesn't actually knock over the wagon in this, in this case. It removes the horses. And then if you click it again, it will show a ruined version of it. The other thing you'll notice are these little white arrows. These work like my other mountable wagons where if, um, a character comes over, he can double click on it. And now he's mounted to the wagon, so whenever you move the wagon control token, the character moves with it. So select to get off, you'd hit the off button, and now he walks his own path again and is no longer attached. Zephyr from the Bailey Wiki channel has a very good video on how these prefabs can get put together. Um, if you want to go into a deeper dive, I'll try putting a link to that in the video description. And then lastly, we have the Traveler's Wagon. Um, and you can see it's just a, uh, a covered wagon. Um, again, with the on and off arrows, if you want to mount it and move around with the wagon. Um, and then the transform button just changes whether or not a horse shows up. So if you just want to have a wagon parked, you can click the horse button to remove the horses and then a reset button to bring the horses back again. Okay, the biggest part of this release um, is what you're seeing right here. This is a new prefab for the Unicorn Inn. Or what I'm terming the, unic terming the Unicorn Inn. You guys can, of course, name it whatever you want in your campaigns. First thing I'll just point out is similar to the other control tokens, this control token here for the Inn has a little book icon attached to it. And what this does is when you click on it, it simply opens up the journal note that I have made for the Unicorn Inn. Um, you know, a small description of what is on each floor, what you might find there, maybe what foods might be sold in the inn. Um, here I have what different drinks might be in the basement. And then I also have a list of the main characters that I, I thought of when I designed the inn. You know, you have your barkeep and I give a small description for each of these characters in case you guys are, you know, um, trying to find names off the top of your head as characters are doing something you were unexpected. Um, so again, that's attached to the control token. I'm going to try doing more of these. And if I get enough time, what I'd really like to do is have one of these attached to every single control token that I have that either explains how to use the control token or gives a description of what it is. Um, but for now, I'm probably going to only limit it to the bigger ones um, like the Unicorn Inn. The Unicorn Inn here, as you can see, is a full-fledged three story in it has a cellar a main floor and a second floor and then on top of that there is also a roof shown here um, because there's no um, main floor tile on this scene you can see through the ground into the basement but i'll show how it would look on a on another scene in a minute um, so like i was saying there is a cellar with a little secret room down here um, there's the main floor, which includes a tavern and a kitchen. Um, there is one active tile here, the exclamation mark, one of my interaction points. Um, double clicking on that will allow players or the GM to open up the store and allow people to jump down into the cellar. Um, going up the second floor, this is just the in rooms and the here I had what I imagined was the owner's quarters um, and a little secret room where he might hide his gold. And then just the third floor is the roof itself. Um, before I go on to showing how this might work on another scene, I'm just going to hop over to the new Shurn proper Verbane's Tower. Um, I had previously released Verbane's Tower, but it had not been fully incorporated into my town's scenes, which was what it was meant for. So I've now officially made a full scene for it for the town. Um, I'm imagining to the north of it or to the top of it here is where the church scene would be. 
Um, and to the right, the new unicorn scene that will be coming out later this month uh, will be on the right here. So what I have here is uh, Verbane's tower. It should function exactly as it did before. All the rotations should still work as you go on and off the different floors. The only change here is really the background tile and the stalls that I've put around this kind of little corner. It was kind of a too small a space to put in full-fledged buildings. Um, so I opted to start making some stalls. I'm planning on making a bunch more of these stalls, uh, but they'll probably come out as I need them for other scenes. Um, and then if I just click on this token here, you can see what the scene looks like. Um, I thought this was kind of cool because players might be walking around being like, what is this place? And then they can get to the gate. and actually see through into the estates of, of the wizard um, and then inside to see the full tower. So that's just a, a scene I made to incorporate this into the rest of the sure proper um, series of town scenes. Okay, so I've just opened up my road to the, through the wilderness scene. Um, I thought this would be a good scene to demonstrate how some of these prefabs will work. So um, I must mention before you guys try doing this at, at home, um, when I made the road through the wilderness scene, all the tiles that I used were set as background tiles. In order for them to work properly with um, levels enabled prefabs, which for instance the Unicorn Inn is, um, these will all have to be switched to overhead tiles um, and that's only because there's a basement so I need something to kind of slide underneath this um, and the easiest way to change how the tile functions is to click on it sorry I'll choose this, this other one click on it uh, or double click it open up its its dialog box go to overhead switch it from none foundry default to shows tile through fog make sure it is overhead it's also checked and then on the levels side you need to change it from negative infinity to infinity um, and change it to zero to nine as that will be the first ground level then you just hit update tile and now it should work with levels um, as expected um, so i've already done that for the other tiles that i'm going to be using to demonstrate um, the unicorn in now to use uh, the prefabs from the actors compendium you just go to uh, the Ruin Works Premium Scenes Actor Compendium here. And then you can just drag and drop them onto the scene as required. Important note, and I've already done this a couple of times while recording this video, is make sure that your Levels UI is off. You do not want to be bringing in these prefabs onto the scene when the Levels UI is on. I'm not sure what happens, but the Levels do get screwed up. So you want to make sure it's closed before you bring on any prefab token. So all you have to do is drag it from the actor's compendium, drop it on the scene somewhere, wait for the processing to finish, and now it says you can use the prefab now. So now I can click on the control token here, the little mug that I use to control the in, and I can do whatever I want with it. So I'm, first I'm going to rotate it and try positioning it by the road to make it kind of like a roadside in in this case. Yeah. Kind of like it look like that. Um, and then if I just move this up here somewhere. Well, this is... Here, just pull it up one more square. And over one. There. And now, I've kind of made it like... The road that led to the clearing now leads to the front of the inn, and this token of place on the scene will see the inn. And now it should work fully, should function properly. Um, I should be able to open any of these doors and enter my unicorn inn, as you can see here. And all of the tiles on the inside should be placed properly. Um, all the active tiles to open and close doors will work as they had previously. And that's how you essentially. As easy as that is how you can bring any of the tokens, prefab tokens that I've made and put into the Actors Compendium onto any scene. Um, also demonstrate this with a couple of other ones quickly. Um, for instance, the food stall I can drag on as well. The UI is closed, so I'm okay to bring it on. And now I can select the prefab token. 
The food stall doesn't want to get too close to the inn. They are trying to steal their business after all. And then I'll just make it face the road. So trap passers-by might want to stop for some food. And then if we just take, say, some of the vehicles I've made, you can also bring these on. I'm going to bring in the traveler's wagon and the transport wagon. So now the traveler's wagon, I'm just going to make it look as though it's traveling down the road. And then this guy I'm going to put in here as though somebody's abandoned the ruined version of this wagon. So that looks like a good kind of angle. And then if I click this little flip over button twice, it should make it a ruined wagon. And so there, there's an old wagon now lying in the field. And if I go back to my token, just to test it out, you can see the roof of the inn is showing properly. And all the other items are there as well. Um, and if he approaches the traveler's wagon, you can see inside of it and mount it if he likes. Um, so that's it, guys, for this release. Um, I will mention for the next release that I am planning on making a bunch of variations for the different tiles of this inn. So there will be knocked over tables, and I knocked over tables, variant rooms on the second floor, some that have been ransacked, for instance, um, some that are filled with occupants if you're, you have thieves in your party who want to go rob from, from the other guests. Um, and then in the basement, there's this extra room here. Um, and I'm planning on making a few variations for there for for different hidden rooms. Maybe they're forgotten rooms, maybe they're altar rooms, maybe they're smugglers rooms. So I've got a bunch of ideas, and if you guys have any ideas of what you would like to see in there, um, feel free to send me a message either on Discord or through the Patreon messaging system, um, and I'll see if I can incorporate something. Um, and then when that's complete for the, for the inn, I'll put buttons on the side kind of like this so you can alter the different rooms as you wish. Okay, guys, um, that's it for this video. It's uh, probably going to be pretty long, so I hope you stuck through it, um, and let me know what you think. Thanks. Have a good night.